Oh my goodness! Hello everybody! This is my garden tour for May 1st! We're finally in the spring! Look at this! I've got zucchini starting to grow. Things from last year are still starting to grow. That's a piece of dinosaur kale I put in here. This is the front yard! And flowers are growing and that grew. So let's kind of go. I'm going to try not to make this too, too long. Yeah, I say that every time, don't I? But it's just been so exciting. Our weather is getting a little better. We're still below normal, but you know what? I'm starting to wonder, it may not be just the weather as far as being cold. Colder for usual for us in Southern California. I had a friend call me last night and he said everything's got powdery mildew. He lives by me. We've been damp. I've noticed black mold and molds growing in places that never grew before. I've seen different types of fungus coming up around the yard that I have never seen before. And mushroom type things. And even when I go to print, I've noticed my paper for my computer is damp. So we've had like a very high humidity because we've got, we've had so much rain and then the hillsides are covered with so many weeds, which is in turn holding down the moisture. And so it's releasing it slowly. And we've had unusual high humidity. I think that's what's really going on. But anyways, it should change in the, at, you know, at least in the next month or so, and we'll see what happens. But things are starting to go here. It's all a work in progress. As you know, gardening always is. You're never finished. There's always something else, but the red bean sorrel in the front, that's doing fantastic. And then that tomato plant, I didn't plant that tomato plant over there. That's last year's plant. It's coming up. It's just taking off. So I'm leaving that and we'll see how things go. This is where I set up the tool. Shame on me, I haven't gotten this video up yet. And how I built this and everything in here is doing really good. I've been trimming some of my dinosaur kale and I've been sticking in pieces. I know, I really have to throw it away. But you know what? I did it there last time and look at this. I've got a beautiful piece of dinosaur kale growing. And then of course there's mint and sorrel. That's green sorrow, and then I've got walking onions growing in here. So everything's doing good. And now no rabbits or squirrels are bothering it. Nothing's been eaten. So this has been really, really good for me. And another tomato from last year. And that suddenly took off. I was thinking of pulling it out. And now it's got flowers growing on it. So I guess I'll be getting tomatoes from here. But I've got some zucchini that's growing in here also and tomatoes. Really, you don't want to grow tomatoes and zucchini together. Not a real good idea because they're both heavy feeders. And I've done it before and it's interesting what happened. I'll do that on the truck bed, how one took over after the other one was done. I don't know what's gonna be here, but maybe if I throw a lot of kitchen scraps in there, it will be okay. But that one is growing and that's a midnight snack that was in the cup. And the cup is still in there and the plant is taking off. Just left the cup, you know how I do that. And then I've got a little one that's in there. See the cup, you can still see the cup. We'll see if that one takes off or maybe it won't because of the squash. So we'll see as time goes. And then of course I've got my ginger table. I am getting ready to get all my ginger in. Look at that. These are new. I've decided to expand the table, get everything off, clear it off. And so now I can plant more ginger and turmeric. I've got to move my blueberries. They're still in the pots that I picked up, but I sat them here and they're doing really good. Look at my tea plant back there. My friend gave it to me because it was dead. He said it's dying. He had three of them, two of them completely died. And it's coming back. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll see what happens with that. The stevia is growing really good. That will stay there. So as soon as I get all this up, hopefully you'll see it in the next two weeks, the ginger will be planted, but it won't be growing yet. It doesn't seem to come up until the weather gets really warm. And then of course, this is my purple tree color that I bought, which is starting to already show growth. I know it will take longer for the roots to come in. Yeah, it's starting to show growth. So we'll see what happens with that. And once it starts to really take off, then we'll move it. I'm going to put those in the ground. Now, oh, Gary's doing his own thing down there. Look at that. He's working on a project. I'm not sure exactly what. Anyways, let's keep going into the main yard. Look at my walking onions. They're walking everywhere. So I've got to start collecting those and planting those as they start to fall over. 
here is where I started in here. I'm still not finished, but I've got zucchini coming up. This I will move soon. This is how I just layer. Look at the, I think there's worms down there. But I layer this just to keep it moist until it starts to take off. The tomato's doing really good, and this is keeping the critters out. So this has really worked. Once they get big, the tool will come off. That's only for now. And then, of course, another squash. That's probably a hybrid, because I didn't plant that. And in here, this is where I've been composting, where I don't know, you know, when I don't know where I want to put it. And look at this. More squash coming up. And those are all tomatoes and stuff coming up. So I might move some, but that is just extra kitchen scraps when I don't know where to put it. Let's see what else is going. The dinosaur kale, I am going to trim it back. It's too damaged. I'm not going to take it out completely because it's coming up from the bottom, but I will be doing a lot of trimming on that. I have tons of dinosaur kale. Let's swing around. There is the purple curly kale that I did the cutting on. It's doing beautiful. This is the center piece. Let me see. I'm going to uncover it right now. This is the piece that had nothing when I stuck it in there. And look at that. It's just growing really good. So hopefully I'll put that in the ground later. And then green sorrow, celery. This is nothing's been done. You know, this has been here. This is nothing that I planted. I've got some cuttings of mushroom plant in there. And those are actually starting to grow. And then the strawberry spinach. Nothing's been done here. And this is that little piece of tree collard I stuck in here. And boy, is that taking off. And that cannot stay there. That will turn into a monster. It already has. And then lemon verbena in here. There's my mushroom plant. They like the weather warmer, so they look really sparse. And this is just a sprouting broccoli that's still throwing broccoli. Let's see. What else is here? We got the curly kale. That's going good. That's, that's quite a few years old already. And then, of course, my dinosaur kale. It's this, there's, what, three plants or four plants in there? They are so big. Tomatoes. This tomato has gone all winter and still is. And that's in a pot. See, it's in a pot. And then on top of that is another pot. See the pot there? So this way I only have to water the walking onions and it waters that pot. And it's done really, really well here all winter. Oh, here. Somebody asked me about the chain. And they asked me, why is there a chain there? Is it for the hummingbirds to land on, or what is it there for? Actually, before the sprout, this is my purple sprouting broccoli. When it was smaller, I used to reach over here and I bang myself into this. I forget that it was here, especially at night if I'm roaming through the garden. So this is for me to remember that it's there. That's all. And sometimes I reach through and I don't want to, you know, knock myself. And I didn't want a bird to fly into this not be able to see it. So I figured I'd just put that there and this way they see it. It's basically just to awareness to know that there is something sticking out in the middle there, but it's not for any other purpose. Walking onions everywhere and of course the mint. Look how big the mint is this year. Again, they like a lot of water and this is the right time for it to grow. And I've noticed all the mint, even the orange mint on the bottom here. Look at the leaves. They're giant. Because usually they're quite small. That's orange mint too. But I've noticed a lot of them are really, really big this year. The leaves. That's strawberry mint. Smells good. I wouldn't make tea out of it. And that's a geranium. I put a little piece in here. Look at that. A couple little pieces and they just took off. I cut those things way back and they grow almost overnight. It's amazing how they grow here. And then, of course, this is my sprouting broccoli. And it went to seed big time. It's pretty much done. And I'm probably going to chop it way back so I can get to this area better because I'm really kind of locked out. I can't get in. And it will also make it produce more growth. I've had a few people say, oh my gosh, my kale is bolting. What do I do? Kale isn't lettuce. So don't worry about that. Once it you know, is done, even collard, once it's done with the seed, it will start to grow bigger leaves again. So it doesn't die back. Like lettuce, once it bolts, it's done. But that's, this is a plant that is a perennial. So once it has its seeds, it will continue to grow. And it's not an annual. It will grow for many, many, many years. So don't worry about that. So I don't worry about that. And then, of course, more chocolate mint in a pot. What else is here? More walking onions, more chocolate mint, geraniums. Then, of course, we've got all the kale. I've got a lot of kale. 
I want to get more tomatoes in here. I want to get some other plants. We're just starting to think about planting. It's still for us, believe it or not, this year, a little early. And that's only because our weather is so different. So people are not even thinking about gardening. I've had some neighbors tell me they haven't even gardened this year yet. Um, another neighbor that usually has a garden taking off by now has nothing, just nothing, bare ground. So uh, it has been the weather and it's not that it's cold because it is cooler than normal. They have been saying that. It's cooler than it's been in many, many years. But it's the, I think it's the humidity. It's cold and wet. So it's causing, yeah, powdery mildew and different things. Here's my pepinos. Gary's is growing great. This one got a little damaged, but it's still perfectly fine. There's more in there. And here are the flowers. I would like to get more pepinos growing. I had a problem with the rabbits. So I wrapped the tool around it and the rabbits don't bother it anymore. So I'll have to get some more pepinos in different places. And I've been told you can do cuttings. I have not tried cuttings off of this. Off of tomatoes, but I haven't done it off of that. So I would like to get some more growing. I think that would be really cool. Hey, this is going to seed too. This is just collard. I think this one's actually a hybrid between sprouting broccoli and collard because see how the leaves aren't real round? They're kind of, kind of elongated. I've had a few come up that are hybrids. Let's see, what else is going on here? And then, of course, mint all over the ground. Everything on the ground is spearmint. And I let it go because it was, I emphasize was, Gary's favorite. Now he tells me he likes chocolate. So I just let it grow everywhere. And you just grab handfuls and we make our mint tea all summer long. So he better be still drinking his mint tea spearmint. A little stevia spearmint and it comes out so good. On ice, oh my gosh, it is so good. There's my curry plant. It's an herb. It's still growing. I've cut that way back because I'm going to plant, I believe, a tomato in here. And of course, I didn't plant that collard again. It might be a hybrid. That one just came up, so I left that. But I'm getting ready. See how I do things? That pot has got an open bottom. I took the bottom off. There's the bottom. And I am getting ready to plant in there. And I just throw, oh, there's some wood chips in there. But I'm going to throw kitchen scraps and maybe some potting mix I'm not, or broken down wood chips. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm preparing it. Let's walk over here. I'm getting it ready. So put this here for the tomato plant. I've already got tomato plants growing. See, there's a tomato plant, but I didn't plant those. I know what I want to grow in here. So I'm getting that ready. And once it's ready, I will get the plant in there and hopefully it will take off. Look at this, a field of collard. And I do love those pots. You know, if you've got a problem with soil, there's a pot, the pots act as a raised bed, like a mini raised bed, and you have so much control using pots. And if you've got a problem, let's say with trees, there's, there's trees there, we have pepper trees, they will send their roots hundreds of feet. Now, their roots are closer to the surface, but they still will go into your pots and they'll rob the nutrients for your plants out of your pots, which kind of, hurts the plants because the plants can't get it all and they take it and then they take the water and you're watering. So that, that's a way of doing it, going with pots that the holes are above the ground or just so you can move the pot periodically. Now if you're letting your plants set root, then that's a little different, but don't make the holes too big so maybe it won't get in there. But they manage to get in there. There's And the other way, which I do here, is if you don't have holes on the bottom, and you're gonna stop, let's say, tree roots. You can put a pot, you can fill this up with all your stuff from your garden, leaves and grass clippings and everything. And then you could set your pots on top and you could have holes on the bottom of your pot so it drains well. And this you can have on, let's say, this white container. You could you do a raised bed that way where the roots from your trees in the area can't get in so you just make the holes above because that's one thing tree roots cannot do. They will not climb up and go in. Once they touch the air, it's air pruning. So it depends on your situation. And originally I did it because we had the trees causing so many problems for me. But you know, it's, it's working out now good. So I'm not gonna complain. I've got pots on the ground and there's oregano growing. And then I've got all that. This big tall purple kale is on the ground and it's doing really good. I've done a video on that where I compost in place right next to it. This thing is now like eight feet tall. So you've got to analyze your situation as to what will work for you. 
There's my lemon balm. I haven't done anything with it. I bought it in the winter and I stuck it there and it's just sitting there, but it's growing. Let's see what else is there. More red bean sorrel. And then that thing. Again, that big purple color. I think it's called dazzling blue, actually. That is just a monstrosity of a plant. Look how it just zigzags and goes around. That thing's so big. Should do cuttings and start them smaller again, but it's doing really good. Right now it's throwing seeds, but I would prefer to get the cuttings off of it so I know exactly what the plant is because it could have cross-pollinated with the, maybe a collard or something or other types of kale. I won't know what I'll get. I may not get the purple in that blue color. Let's see, more walking onions. Oh, and you see the layers? Now you can see the layers. I'll put pot in pot and pot. So you start with a bigger pot smaller pot another pot and then you have things grow on the side I've got walking onions growing on the side I love layering it works so well for me again more spearmint everywhere my eggplant looks sad so we'll see what happens if I'm gonna get different eggplant or cut the whole thing back and leave it not sure yet and then there's the tree collard that's one of them in the ground that one is between the two tubs it got fed really well that thing's only a year old Look at that. It got fed really well because it was between the two tubs that I compost in place. So that one got really, really big. And I can do tons of cuttings off of that. And I do have to do that. The thing is just growing and growing. It grew great all winter. And then the other ones back there, still kind of tilted and smaller, but it did feed off of the one. Didn't get as big. And then, of course, you've got the really big one. Let's walk over here that was feeding off, actually it probably was pulling off of this one. And this is the three tier that I had going, which I have to replant. And then it was feeding off of the white one, so it was getting from both. And it's in a pot. Look at that. But of course the roots have long left. And it's in the ground. And that pot did not have an open bottom, just big holes, regular holes. That's a regular flower pot that you would buy, let's say a tree or a plant in. And look at that. I would say eight feet tall, but so many of these really have to come off. The best way to get them is this size. But if I took this, I could chop this all the way down and then do segments and plant segments and start them that way. So I'll have to decide how I want to do that. And there's that purple kale. That's the one I did the cutting on. That one was also about six feet tall. And look how big it's gotten already. That thing is taking off too. And to be honest, they're healthier, the leaves, because cutting off the, you know, the bad part, it really made the plant grow much better. You really don't want to let things go too, too big, even though I do. Let's see, that one too, that had all kinds of bok choy and different things last year. I think I started heavier in June with our planting. Well, of course the bok choy all died back. The little bird is singing above my head, so cute. Um, but the purple dazzling, actually blue dazzling kale, that made it, those two in there, and it's just gone up and it's gone to seed. So I can do different things on that too. I can do cuttings off of it. I could leave it. It's a good purchase for birds. Uh, once it's done throwing its seeds in its flower, it will get big the leaves again. Because remember, it's putting everything it's got into reproducing. And that's why the leaves get smaller during that time because all their energy is going into making seed now, not producing leaves. And there is my sun gold tomato, which lasted all winter and really needs to be cleaned up. But it is still going. We have had tomatoes all winter. Look at this. this thing just keeps going and going and going. I'm going to have to say that's one of the best tomatoes on the property. Made it through our winter. It looks a little sad because I haven't cleaned it up. It's in a pot, but the pot is halfway in the ground, so the roots have left. I really like pots because when I water it, I know that tomato is getting water really well. And it's done really well. So I should get cuttings off of this and then replant them. A lot of times it's hard to get cuttings off of these. They grow like a vine. Instead of sending off shoots like you would cut off, they send off tomatoes. But you could always take a tip if I wanted to to cut it. I haven't done that. Or I should just collect some seeds. Maybe that would be the thing to do. I haven't done that. I'll have to do it on that one. This is one of my compost bins. And it's got Swiss chard growing in here, the green and the red one. But it's pretty much toast, so I think I'm going to chop it down. This is where the rabbit used to made his bathroom out of a couple months ago. 
So I'm going to plant in there and then I'm working on that one. See? You don't throw anything away. Everything in your garden goes back to your garden. That's the way I do it. And it's cheaper that way, plus you know what it is. I know I don't spray. I know there's nothing toxic in there. I know it's organic. It will break down. And then on the top, if you were doing this in your garden, I can throw broken down wood chips, but if you don't have broken down wood chips, buy a cheap bag of potting soil and dump that on top and then start growing. In the meantime, everything underneath will start to break down and you'll have the greatest soil and the happiest plants. See how big that tree colored is? And here come the doves. The doves are going into the feeding bowl now and they're looking for food. They found the property. I haven't had doves here. Last year, no doves and now I got doves. Here is another bin that I compost in place. And of course, you've all seen the papayas growing here. I did not plant these papayas. But look at that. These are the two. There's a few small stragglers down there, which I have not pulled out. Kind of letting the bigger ones just take off and do their own thing. They broke the pot. There was a pot in there. They were growing in a flower pot. And of course, we drilled out the bottom. So we wanted to make sure their roots would go out, which it did. And look at that. We're going to have papayas here soon. They're still green. We haven't picked any ripe ones from that one yet. And the other one, which I thought would have no papayas, looks like it may end up with one. I don't want to cut this one out because there's some sort of balance going on here. It could have protected it all winter from the cold. So I'm just going to leave that one and we'll see what happens with this one. It's still producing and we're still getting papayas and, and we're getting some side shoots too. So Gary wants to do some cuttings off of that. Let's see. Here's my strawberry tower. We've been eating strawberries. So has somebody else. And that's what happens when you don't put tool on. But I wrap my strawberries in tool once, like now I should just take a little tool, wrap some strawberries, and then we get all the strawberries we want. I can't wrap the whole thing because I need the bees to come in here and pollinate it. But once you have strawberries like that, those are done. I can wrap those in tool and then I'll have strawberries. It's a little work, but you know what? If I want nature in the garden, then I have to work that way. If I don't want nature, then you can do other things. But I like nature in my garden. I'll go ahead and I'll share my garden with nature. And this is flat leaf parsley, and look, it has really gone the seed. So with the flat leaf parsley, I'll collect the seed, and then from there, I'll sprinkle it around the yard. And then, of course, you've seen my giant curly kale. Probably you've seen it many times. It's kind of skinny, but you know what? It's doing really good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And for now, it can just do its thing, because I haven't really done anything in here. Of course, chocolate mint. And that is some Swiss chard. I really don't need the basket on that. It's struggling with the basket. I'll probably just get a little bit of tool around there and then the rabbits will leave it alone. And then another pearly, curly purple kale. Let's swing over here. Look at my Moringa. It's coming back. So my Moringa is coming back. We've got leaves coming up everywhere. And this is going to be great. And we've got a singing little bird in there. So that'll be great. The only problem with the Moringa tree here is everything here ends up being shaded and then I don't end up with as much as I really want growing here. Last year I couldn't really grow anything in these tubs because the only thing that grew in there is a walk onion because of the shade. It was just too shaded. The garlic chives grew good. They come up everywhere. They come up in pots. They come up in the ground. They did okay. And of course it didn't bother the papaya because they've gone way up there so they can catch some of the sun. But that's the only thing with the Moringa. So we'll see what happens as time goes on and what I can plant in here. And this needs to be cleaned up too. I had all kinds of cucumbers and tomatoes growing in here. So we'll see what happens this year. And um, we'll, I don't know, we're just starting this. Like I said, it's a work in progress. We're j oh, there, you know what, I wanna uncover this. I forgot about this. So we'll see what happens. Just a little papaya. I had taken that papaya tree out of that container over there. And I stuck it over here and I covered it. So I want to see if we can get this one to grow. And it seems like it's, it is growing. I just need to put some tool around there. And that will help keep the rabbits from chewing on it. I put the cage on there, but see it grew leaves and it got stuck in the cage. Now it's going to have to grow a new set of leaves on the top. So I didn't catch that earlier. I didn't think it had hit the top already, but it did. 
Oh, Gary has covered this. Look at this. He likes his coral. He said something climbed up there and he knew it, so he was going to cover this in tulle. So hopefully that will keep the squirrels off, because the squirrels don't like the tulle. I've got a lot of videos on that, so you can see that. So he just covered that, because that was not there yesterday. And then, of course, he did it on this one, too. He bought himself this really bright pink tool. It's called Coral. And he wanted that so he can see it. This way he knows where the tool is. And I see that he covered that one as well. And see, that one's in green. That's in my hunter green. And he said when he covers his vegetables, he can't see it as well. And he wants to know where the fruit, and I should say the fruit, where the fruit is. This way he can spot it. And let me step back. That's actually good. See how you can spot the coral, the pink? It was a toss-up between red and coral. He went with coral because he said it was more brighter. It was more of a shocking color that would stand out. Where this way he can see where the fruit is, especially his pepinos that hide. And even cucumbers, if you need to wrap some of those, you can see that color. And this, you couldn't see it. It would blend in with leaves. So that was the color he chose. I like this color, Hunter Green, but you know what? He's right, it does stand out. So that's something to see. I have not shared that at all because I haven't seen it myself. He just put that up. All right, let's walk over to the wall. I'm trying to rush before the sun comes out too bright and then it's harder to see. It's easier on the camera. Plus my best camera broke. So I'm using a different camera right now. Look at all the beautiful nasturtiums that are growing up there. And they keep receding, so every year we have more and more, and we have two different colors. We've got the ones that are really bright yellow, and the ones that are also really pretty orange-red almost. I'm a little upset because my best camera that I use all the time is not working good. And I called my favorite place, Robert's Camera, which were really nice, and they gave me a number of Sony and told me, because there's two of them that are down that I've got that are Sony's. They said, oh, Sony will fix it for free. I said, no, they're not going to fix it for free, but I'd be happy if they fix it. So they gave me their phone number, and then, of course, Sony gave me a big runaround and then gave me websites I'd already gone to, and all I wanted was a price. Then they gave me a place that I should call, and they would not give me a price. I said, well, you know what it is. I even know what it is. There's a code on there. Well, they wanted $80 for me just to drop off my camera and then about 180 to fix it maybe after they look at it. And I thought, no, this is ridiculous. Kind of felt bad like everybody was just giving me a runaround. Simple question, do you fix it or can you not fix it? And what I've done now is I've sent it off to a guy on eBay. I spoke to him, seemed really nice. And it's gonna be half the price of what I was quoted. And hopefully I get it back and hopefully it's working again. I don't have to go buy a new one. But I was kind of surprised that Sony gave me such a runaround. They told me, send an email. I said, what, so I can hear back in a year? I have not heard back. So anyways, that's it. So I'm kind of down that my good camera that I do a lot of wildlife is not working. But hopefully I will get it back. The guy said he's going to fix it right away for me and get it right back for, to me. And I will be a happy camper <laughs> once I get my really good camera back. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Listen to the hawks. Yeah, what I want, my goal is to have two or three of the same cameras. I use the Sony HX400. And for wildlife, they're just perfect because of the zoom on it. But, you know, you do risk after using it for a long time that the stabilizer goes out. And that's all that's out. It, the camera's got a code on it. It tells you exactly what's not working. But I, I kind of was a little upset that they would put me on hold and give me a run around. Look at the lizards. And tell me, you know, here, go to this website. And I said, I already been to your website. It, she said, did you troubleshoot? Troubleshoot? There is no troubleshooting for this. It's gotta be either cleaned out or replaced. And I said, I did troubleshoot. There is some troubleshooting things that people have come up with and it worked for like a minute or two and then it stopped working. I don't know, it was kind of a run around. And then she gave me other websites to go to. And like I said, it all took me back to where I was, which in other words, go look at one of their local dealers or somebody close by. And then they won't even give me a price unless they, I pay them $80 up front. 
years ago I did have a camera break and I did send it to t Sony and Sony did fix it. I was surprised and sent it back but they said there was a recall at one point on it. And Robert seemed to think there might have been on this but I guess there wasn't. So look at the lizards. There's I think there's three of them on Look at the lizards chasing each other. Nope, oh, they're back in the grass. Lizards have a territory. So you'll have a whole bunch of lizards across the wall, but they all have a territory. They know that this is theirs, and if somebody comes on it, they chase them off. And I do believe they do live in pairs, because you'll see two of them a lot of times hanging out together. And then if another male, I guess, comes, they chase them off. So I want my camera back, but we'll see. Hopefully I get my camera back, and it will be working. And in the meantime, I may get another one. And there was another list. So there were three of them on the wall. He's up on the top there. Let's see if I can get in with this camera. Okay, I've got some zucchini starting in the bathtub. So we'll see how that goes. Again, zucchini here likes it really warm, but at least the plants are starting to do good. I have not planted in that yet, but I plan on it. This is last year's Swiss chard, and it's going to seed, but we're getting beautiful leaves off of this. I know Gary's is much bigger than mine, <laughs> his leaves, but you know what? It's doing really, really well for a plant that's over a year old. Celery, another tomato that did go all year, and I've been collecting tomatoes off of it. See, we still have tomatoes, but it really needs to be cleaned up. Oh, it's growing a lot of new tomatoes, too. So I'm going to need to clean that up, restake it, and see if it's worth saving or putting in a new one. And then, of course, I've got Swiss chard and celery all through here. Walking onions, and they're walking everywhere. I love my walking onions. That is something I think everybody should grow. It just grows and grows, and if you really needed a bigger piece of white onion, you could always pull the plant out. If not, you can just eat the leaves. And we had walking onions all winter. It grows all year. Sal thistle, we leave that for the birds. Eggplant that needs to be removed. It's turned yellow already, cannot eat that. And then there's some more Swiss chard. Let's walk over to the truck bed. Let's see if Mama Rabbit is still here. She hides, and she only comes out when she's really disturbed, unless she's not feeding her babies. I'm trying to see if she's around. Okay, I don't see her. Oh my goodness, we've got a treat, look. Okay, obviously, she is so protective of her babies that she doesn't even want to leave. Hi, Mama. Did you not have a chance to cover your babies? So where are your babies? See, they buried their babies, and I am not sure where they are. But I have not seen her here. Now, you know what? Being that she's sitting there and doesn't want to leave, she can have her babies on the other side. But she is literally, I could have put my hand out. She was two feet from me, and she didn't want to leave. She's still in there. She's on the other side. Isn't that something? I have no idea where her babies are. And I do have a video and I cannot find it. I could kick myself. I got a video. We have two, we have photos of one that had babies right on the dirt. Then she dug a hole and buried her babies and took care of them there. This was in the front yard. And then we have another video somewhere where they, she went in the middle of Gary's uh, sweet potatoes, had babies there and never dug a hole left them out in the open I cannot find it I'm looking on my computer it's got to be somewhere and I've got video of it because what Gary ended up doing and I'm sure we've got a video up on YouTube would be one of our first ones was Gary got a big chain link gate and he lighted it across I should light it he laid it across the babies right on top he laid it on top of the babies because it wouldn't crush them but he knew that the coyotes would not be able to get through the chain link gate. Only mama could squeeze through because they could just fly through chain link. And she raised her babies there. And we got to watch her raise her babies out in the open. Let's see if she's gonna move. So now I know she's hanging around here. And you know what's odd? She's not eating anything in here. There's been no, I don't know where she is. Let's see if she's gonna jump out at me. See, I'm suspecting they're in here. See the hole? This is all, I don't want to stick my hand in there and get bit by a rabbit. This is loose and it's been dug out. Oh, wait a minute. There is a hole there. 
this goes under this might go under she's probably got him in that position and then once they get a little bigger she may take him out and put him somewhere else safe but right now she's probably got him in there I don't know where she went she's probably sitting on the other side or she's still in the truck bed see usually she runs around here somewhere nope I don't know where she is but anyways, that's the truck bed which I really wanted to tear apart. And I was almost thinking of doing squash in here again. Because quite a few years ago, I did squash in this one. I should do a throwback Thursday on that one. And we grew over 50 spaghetti squash. And they grew just great. Ugh, is that what I think it is? Yes. Lovely. Locusts, I call them. Gary says they're grasshoppers. Um, the thing just grew everywhere and it grew all over the ground. And that is an interesting story. That's why I want to do a video on it because they came up in my compost in place and I moved a few in here and the spaghetti squash grew really good. But there was also tomato plants when I moved in. The tomato plants stayed really tiny the whole time. They stayed alive, but they stayed really tiny. When the squash died out, the tomato plants took over. And then we had tomatoes all winter. That is a radish. I've talked about that many times. And you know what we're doing now? We're coming out here and we are eating the flowers. The flowers are so good. Mmm. They are just so good. I can't believe it. it's like eating a mouthful of radishes, but no, you know, they're not real hot. Just a, oh my gosh, it's so good. Gary's been coming over here and we've been eating it. That is so good. I had some radishes I planted in the truck bed and it went to seed before I ever got any radishes. It fell there and why is it growing? Because I'm starting the compost in place in that tub I placed there and I filled that up with water and there must be worms and everything in there and it's leaching out, going out of the truck bed and into that. So that is just growing like a monster. Remember, if you're doing compost in place with containers, plant next to your containers too if possible of course if it's on a patio or a deck you can't but you can catch that because everything coming out of there is liquid gold and then of course i'm going to end it here but gary's bees are down there and that's where he did his setup you all saw the movie and he's very happy his bees are still there so there's his bees that's the little house he built covered right now by the branch. See the bees? Those are the bees flying. There's his barbecue. He wants to fix up the barbecue really good so they'll build a big hive and move over to the barbecue. But I think he's going to end up getting a beehive soon. And hopefully a bee suit. So with that, have a wonderful day. I can't wait till I can really go gun ho into here and start planting all kinds of stuff and know that my weather is stabilized and the plants will like it. I have tried moving some seedlings out and they just seem so dormant because it gets so cold at night. I mean, it's not cold like back east, but it's been cooler and the plants just haven't taken off like I wanted them to. But the Swiss chard is doing good and other things around here are doing really good. I'm just waiting for zucchini. I want to start making zucchini bread. It's actually a cake and it's so good. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. So still standing here. Mom just jumped out of the truck bed. So she's got more than one baby probably around here. Usually they have a couple. And let's see if we can see Mom. She's very protective and she has to be. See, I don't see her right now. I just saw her. And she leaped out. And this is why she's got to be protective. That is coyote dung. So she's got to really watch for me and coyotes that come through here and find a really good safe place to hide them. I'm not sure where she went. She's pro she might be on the other side of the truck. Oh, there she is. Okay. So what she's probably doing is keeping her babies underneath the radish plant now. She probably took them out of the truck bed or she probably moves them around. And there's one baby off into the grass. So she wants me to follow her now. See, she's got her babies now distributed probably different places. And so now they're moving around. 
but she's under the radish plant. And she wants me to follow her. Isn't that something? Yet her babies are starting to get out there and venture around. Isn't that cool? I don't think she's got a baby with her up there. Let's see if we can still see her. But she's under the radish plant. No, she went back underneath. She's got the whole truck bed. She can stay anywhere she wants. But they can carry their babies, too. So isn't that cool? So we got to see Mom protecting the truck bed. And we got to see one of her babies that are running around. And who knows? Maybe that baby wasn't even hers. There's so many rabbits. Could be another rabbit that had babies. Her baby still could be in the truck bed somewhere. Soon we're going to have dozens and dozens of baby rabbits running everywhere. And they don't stay babies long. Before you know it, they're big rabbits. <laughs>